Hi, and welcome to Ann Brandon. Today we have a very special guest. We have Brian Sutherland from Grim Acres. Welcome, Brian. Glad to be here. So, scare away cancer out at Grim Acres. Oh, why did you start the Grim Acres? Grim Acres Scare Away Cancer, uh, basically the reason that we started is we really wanted to kind of provide uh, the Westman region with a, a really good Halloween haunt that people could really enjoy. And uh, we really wanted to attach it to a reason that people really feel uh, quite comfortable with. Uh, it's something that affects everybody, something that everybody's familiar with. And um, we actually went with the Canadian Cancer Society as our choice of, of who to support. And the reason for that being that uh, my wife and I both lost our mothers to cancer. And uh, my father fought her for many years. Uh, many people in the Brandon region would actually know this story because of what they've heard from what we've done in the years previous. But uh, again, we just really want to touch on the fact that we want to see an end to, end to cancer. And uh, the reason that Grimmakers exists is basically to provide everybody as, as a way to scare away cancer. Uh, anytime anyone is facing the cancer journey, they, are, they face a lot of fears in the way, in the path of, to, their, to their, uh, their healing and their curing of disease. So uh, what Grim Acres Scary Cancer exists is to basically provide a source for people to be inspired. And uh, we're really so proud to be behind this, this project. It's done a lot of great things for a lot of great people. Now Grim Acres has evolved over the years. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give us a little bit of a history from where you started to where you are now? Absolutely, it has grown so many different ways. Uh, if you go back to the when we first started off, we actually began in the Green Acres area in Branham, Manitoba. So I always like to do little puns on things and play on words and stuff like that. So when we were living in the Green Acres area, we were trying to think of a good way to come up with a name that encompasses the area that we're in. So naturally, I just came up with the idea of calling it Grim Acres because it kind of plays in some of the you know TV shows that we were we were growing up with and things like that. And it also gives a bit of uh, again a local feel. So. When we started off, it actually began as a Halloween haunt, just based right in our yard. We had a nice little creepy fence that we tore down previously, and we painted up all gray and everything like that, and put some nice decorations that were kind of scary at the time on there. And a lot of the people that are around us, they really enjoyed it. Um, as we progressed throughout the years, it actually got a little bit bigger and better. As you can imagine, we had quite a few people that supported it over the years, and uh, they really wanted to see some more things that, uh, that were kind of new to them, so we, we definitely helped them out with that. Uh, in year two, we actually went ahead and uh, progressed the event by putting the maze through our garage. Now, not, I mean, not many people want to give up their garage space for Halloween haunt. Um, but we actually gladly did that because it was fun to us and, and people started coming out in bigger numbers. By year three, that's when it really started taking off and, and, and the brand and people really started supporting it and getting behind it because that's when we started seeing a lot more support from corporate areas and sponsorships and things like that. And uh, we actually put the maze through a covered 30 foot by 10 foot square uh, party tent in our yard. And that had some more maze aspects to it so that people were able to go through the garage, through the maze in the back, and then they came out and people really supported that. And we're so, we're so thrilled to be just a part of that as well, um, just being able to entertain people. By the fourth year, that's when things really got crazy and we put another party tent in front of the garage. So by the time we were done, we probably had about a thousand square feet of, of scare, fa uh, scare uh, um, area. So it, uh, it really took off from there. We probably had in our first year, probably had just around 170 people that came out and by year four it was just close to probably about a thousand people. Uh, last year we actually decided to move to an acreage which is something we discussed years previously because we knew that it was getting so big that we kind of had to make the move. Um, we were discouraged at first because there's a lot of places out in, in the West Main area that have acreages that are actually kind of scarier on their own because there's there's a lot of um, a lot of older places out there that probably should have burned down, uh, but ours was not one of them, and we were lucky enough to actually locate a, a acreage out by Kemney that has an abandoned house on it, which to a haunter is perfect. To anybody else, they might not want that, but to us, it was a gold mine. So um, we walked into that, we renovated the abandoned house so that it had uh, the maze through all three floors, which is great because Technically, this is the first covered uh, haunt that is in the Brandon area, which, as you can imagine, in Manitoba, weather plays a huge factor in what you can do. To have a covered uh, a haunt, that was amazing. Um, this year, we actually worked towards building uh, a 3,000 square foot maze in our pole barn. So to convert that, we actually started off in May. We've been working on that since then, probably putting in about 30, 35 hours a week of, of hard, solid work into that. Uh, since then and it's progressed and right now we're pretty close to being finally finished with that um, and one of the biggest things that we've actually done this year is we were able to uh, take part in a online 
online uh, market research thing called uh, the scare factor. They have this little rating system which is able to accurately kind of depict where you you stand in everybody's everybody's favor. And they basically take the top 31 haunts that are in, in North America, not just Canada, but North America, Canada and the U.S. And thanks to our fans and our local support in Westman and Brandon and everywhere else, we actually reached number nine in the 31 haunts in, in North America. That's an amazing amount. Uh, one thing that I'm really keen on, on getting across is that uh, you always see causes that are out there in the world. I'm not talking just Canada, I'm talking the world, where occasionally people can come across something that's so amazing that people are just automatically attached to it and they have to sit back and say, how did this happen? This Grim Acres is really one of those events. Because if you think about it, Manitoba is not really known a lot regionally or nationally for what we do. Westman gives a lot. They actually support a lot of causes. We're known for helping people out whenever we need to. And uh, yeah, for us to be able to provide such an amazing event such as Grim Acres and to make such an impact in so many people's lives, we're just so thrilled to be a part of it. So let us know a little bit more about this year. You, you mentioned a little bit about the pole barn, but what else is, mm -hmm. what else is new out at Grim Acres? You know, I like the fact you just said new. The thing that really brings people in is every year we try to provide something new. Uh, people can go to an event every year and see the same thing and they're not going to be as excited about it, right? But not with Grim Acres. We always try to have something new, which is why we always try to evolve with the process, right? Uh, Grim Acres itself, it's, it's almost taken on a life of its own. It's an entity that has grown and evolved. and. Um, what we're doing every year is to make it exciting. Uh, last year we actually had uh, Tagum Mobile Laser Tag, which came along to help entertain children. That was one aspect we had last year and we're having again this year. This year what we're gonna do to provide a little bit more entertainment for children who might be too scared to go to the haunt is we actually have a local group from a student-led uh, group from one of the schools who will be providing a carnival atmosphere for one of the nights as well to help entertain. Uh, this year, the maze that we got going through the barn, I, I really want to be able to tell everybody what's going on, but again, I can't really get into it because there's so many secrets in there. Uh, to give away any of them uh, would actually kind of just be do doing more harm than good, but I can promise you that with everything that we've done in the barn this year, you will not believe what, what has actually happened with all the construction that we've done. Um, it's just been amazing. Uh, we actually have a, a live music DJ that's actually on there to help provide some entertainments for the people that are in the crowds. We have a new uh, construction. We constructed, actually we didn't construction. We bought a uh, three, uh, um, about a 10 by 30 foot uh, shed this year so we can have our concessions in it and our staff change area. Um, we're going to have some entertainment provided by the uh, local escape room. They're doing a nice little function in there. They've got a nice little haunt that we built on there separately for them. So they're going to take uh, people that are going to be going through there on 15 minute little increments and if you escape that house then you survived and that's a good thing. Uh, they're going to charge $10 for that and every $10 that they get they're actually going to donate to Cancer Society. So we've got so many things that are going on there. Uh, one of the things that we've done for the last three years has been really successful and really entertaining has been the uh, flash mob. Year one we did uh, flash mob to the thriller song by Michael Jackson, one of the all-time greats for Halloween entertainment. I mean nobody can ever top that for Halloween music or, or video effects. Year two we did uh, a flash mob to the Ghostbusters and year three, well I can't tell you that one because that just gives away too many secrets. You're gonna have to come and see that one. Right, so when are you operating this year? This year, we try to keep our hours pretty much the same every year. Uh, we actually do take a look at the numbers from the year previous to kind of alter it if we have to, and this year we kind of did. Usually we would start about five o'clock, but we find that's too light for the, uh, the hours that we're on. A lot of our actors and our volunteers, which are well over 100 this year over the four days, they can't really make it because they've obviously got work commitments and family commitments, right? So this year we're gonna reopen from six o'clock till 10 p.m. Uh, from October 28th to the 30th and then on the 31st Halloween we're open 6 till probably about 11 o'clock which really works out well because I know last year we actually had some uh, people that came in all the way from Winnipeg to see us so obviously some people they need some time to travel to see us so yeah we got a lot of people that are coming out we've had some really great exposure and we're so glad to uh, to see everybody supporting us. Excellent well Thanks for uh, coming in, Brian. Thank you. And letting us uh, know all about uh, Grim Acres and what's going on this year. So again, that's uh, Grim Acres and it's out on Kemney. Lots of signs to, mm -hmm. to be able to get out to it. Maybe even a few people directing traffic and stuff yeah. to be able to get in. And, and it's switched up from from last year. It's switched up every year and stuff. It does. It's, it's uh, like I said, it just evolves. It's amazing. It takes its own own mind and everything like that. And my wife actually does a lot of the research that goes into it to actually come up with all the plans for what we do. So um, 
yeah, I, I, I really enjoy seeing people coming out and saying how much they enjoy that. Um, and if anybody actually does want to contact us as, as far as volunteering or have, if they have any questions, they can actually check us out on Facebook under uh, Grimmakers Scare Away Cancer. They can also contact us via email at grimmakers at gmail.com. And we have a new website that's being set up uh, as we speak, that's actually going to be www.grimmakers.ca. You should be able to check that out within the next week, and it's going to be completely updated to have a whole bunch of new stuff on there, including some of our merchandise, which has been handled uh, amazingly by uh, one of our local companies that uh, does a lot of a lot of, uh, a lot of products like that. So it's been it's been nice. Excellent. Well, thanks again, Brian. So that's Grimmakers Scare Away Cancer. October 28th to 30th from 6 to 10 p.m. And again on Halloween, October 31st from 6 to 11. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.